I heard Abba saying, go into Proverbs 15, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. But I hear Abba saying, go into Proverbs 15. We're going to look at Proverbs 9, 10 in a while. Look what it says. Take it up in verse 32. He who disdains instruction despises his own soul. But he who heeds rebuke gets understanding. The fear of the Lord, verse 33 of Proverbs 15, the fear of the Lord is in the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Take it up in chapter 16, verse 1. The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So something to think about very, very carefully. The Bible says, before honor is humility. Noah was not a puffed up man. Noah was found righteous before God. He was righteous in his generation. We're going there. Noah All right. Genesis 6 9 The book of Genesis 6, 9, and it says, So that's 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. That's 5 threes. Okay, that's a key. The book of Genesis in 6, 9, The Bible says, Noah, however, found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Take it on verse 9. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. In verse 10, and it says, And Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All right. So Noah was a righteous man. And then we're looking at Proverbs 15 um, of wisdom. So Proverbs 15, 33 says, The fear of the Lord is in the instruction of wisdom, and humility comes before honor. Humility, before honor is humility. So he had to humble himself before God. He had to listen to the words of the Lord. You see where we're getting with this? Hold on. We're going to look at Proverbs 9, 10. And it says, take it on verse 9. Instruct a wise man and he will be wiser still. And teach a righteous man and he will increase in his learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding verse 11 for through wisdom your days will be multiplied and years will be added to your life so let's just look at a simple scenario let's look at somebody wanting to do anything that they just want to do anything let's say skydiving let's say they have like this wild passion for skydiving and they're just accustomed to being like spontaneously crazy and one day the parachute don't open. That's it, right? The Bible says, Through wisdom your days will be multiplied and years will be added to your life. Alright, even as... Uh, somebody underline Proverbs 15, 33. Oh no. Okay, so... YouTube just went down. I'm gonna just put on, uh, put it on again. This is saving me time, a lot of time. Yeah. 
eat. Eat safe through water, okay? Ah, uh, this is part two. Hold a second. Let me just get this back up and running again. All right. Eight. We're reading Proverbs 9.10. Take it up in verse 9. Instruct a wise man and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man and he will increase in his learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So when we know who God is, it's understanding. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. That's why um get understanding. I hear I just get understanding. Daniel, Daniel set himself to understand, okay? The Bible says that Daniel set himself to understand. But I hear the Lord saying, get understanding as well. So we're going to go, Daniel set him, his heart, or his self, his, okay, to understand. Now look at this. Look at the revelation Daniel received because he set himself to know that God is Jesus Christ. He, he wanted to know Him. The Bible says, knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Do you really want to know who God is? It says in Daniel 10, 12. The book of Daniel 10, 12. Take it up in verse 11. He said to me, who? Who's the he? It's an angel of the Lord sent to Daniel. He said to me, Daniel, you are a man who is highly precious. Consider carefully the words that I'm about to say to you. Stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Verse 12, do not be afraid. Daniel, he said, for from the first day that you purposed or you set yourself to understand and humble yourself before your God, there's that word humble again, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. Who's there? Gabriel. And it says, verse 13, however, the prince of the kingdom of Persia, religion, it opposed me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left there with the kings of Persia. All the highest principalities of religion. Hmm. But Daniel set himself to understand who God was. Hallelujah. He set himself to understand, to gain more knowledge of the Holy One. All right, hold on. We're going to read it. Get understanding, um, get wisdom kind of thing. We're looking at Proverbs 4, 7. Proverbs 4, 7. Take it up in verse 6. And it says, do not forsake wisdom. Wisdom, what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says, do not for forsake. Do not for forsake. For. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will guard you. Wisdom is supreme. So acquire wisdom, and whatever you may acquire, gain understanding, which is knowledge of the Holy One. Praise her, and she will exalt you. If you embrace her, she will honor you. Just like we read in Proverbs 15.33, that before honor is humility. 
Genesis 6 9 tells us that Noah was righteous before God. He was a righteous man, blameless or perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. But then we just read, read that one of, the, one of the others walked with God as well. Who was it? It was Enoch. All right, hold on. We're going back into Matthew 18, 3 now. And what does Jesus say about humility and walking with God? Hear you, Father. What has the Lord asked of you, O oh man, that you do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? What has the Lord asked of you, O oh man, but to do justly? Somewhere in Micah. My scripture page has about 40 open pages here right now. Micah 6, verse 8. And this is a key. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay? This is a key. A key of two, six, six twos. Which is 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, Micah 6, 8. Let's get into it. Take it up in verse 7. I hear the Lord saying, what has he asked of us? What has he really asked of us but to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? And it says, take it on verse 7, Would the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I present my firstborn child for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Verse 8, he has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to act justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? Take it up in verse 9. You're going to see why Satan's trying to knock me out while I'm doing this. He's trying his hardest. Well, I see angels coming. I see angels, angels. Look what it says. Micah 6, take it up in verse 9. The voice of the Lord calls out to the city. I hear you, Father. Oh, I'm trying to get it in. <laughs> if a trumpet sounds in a city... The lion has roared, who will not prophesy. Something like that. Uh, what do I write? If a trumpet sounds in a city, the book of Amos. Where's Amos again? In the book of the prophets. The book of the prophets. Jo Jonah and everybody. I just threw everybody into one pot. Jonah and everybody. How do you like that? Terrible. Joel, Micah, Hosea. Amos, where are you, brother? Book of Amos. The book of Amos 3 6. This is a key. 333. Amos 3 6. I'm getting electrocuted, but I love it. I hope you're getting electrocuted too. Look what the Lord says. Amos 3, 6, looking at verse 5. Will a bird fall into a snare on the earth where there is no trap? Wait, I'm going to read it again. Will a bird fall into a snare on the earth where there is no trap for it? Will a snare spring up from the earth? If it is caught nothing, or does it spring up when it catches something? So what does he say? Hey, God is warning us suddenly, okay? The Bible says, If a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people be afraid? 
If there is calamity in a city, will not the Lord have done it? Take it up in verse 7. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So what does this have to do with anything now? This part, Amos 3, 6. It says, if a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people be afraid? If there is a calamity in a city, has not the Lord done it? But then he brings in, He said, surely he does nothing until he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. The prophets listen to the voice of the Lord. They listen. Can you see that? Can you see the pose on my hands? Just seriously raise them. I'm getting electrocuted and I'm forgetting English here. Surely the Lord does nothing until he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. What does that tell us? That the prophets of the Lord, they, they listen. All right, let's read. Let's go on. Let's go back now into Micah 6, 9. Can I forget any longer? I'm sorry, verse 9. The voice of the Lord calls to the city. And it is sound wisdom to fear your name. What does the prophets hear? They hear the trumpet sound of the Lord. They hear the words of the Lord saying, go and warn my people. They hear, okay, this calamity is coming upon this nation. This calamity is coming upon this city. The prophets of the Lord, they, they listen. Look what it says. Heed the rod and the one who ordained it. Heed the rod and the one who ordained it. Who ordained it? It's Jesus Christ himself, God himself. So God says, heed the rod. What rod, Lord? The rod. Whoever is saying, hey, this is the word of the Lord. This is the correction. Heed the rod and the one who ordained it. But who is who is holding the rod of correction? Who is? It's Jesus. The rod of correction. All right. We're going back now. We're going. But deep calls on to deep. Now you're going to see how righteous Noah was in his generation. <laughs> wow, Papa. You just leave me like a wow. I'm just saying wow. I'm just going to leave it like wow. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Wow. All right. So we're going all the way back now into. Hold on. I'm going backwards now into the scripture page. Where are we with this? Coming all the way down to, we just looked at the child um, being like a child. We looked at Matthew 18.3. And then God says in Proverbs 15.33, which I wrote and they just kicked it out, I guess. But it's also a powerful word where he says that before honor is humility. What would you call it to Noah? who survived the flood with his family members. Would you see that God was honoring him above all creation or all humans that were on the earth then? Because it's only Noah and his family now. What did Noah do? He humbled himself before God. My hand is scratchy, itchy, itchy. Hmm. Blessing and honor, glory and power, riches and wisdom and strength. All right, look what it says. Proverbs 15, looking at verse 32. He who disdains instruction despises his own soul, but he who heeds rebuke gets understanding. The fear of the Lord is in the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. So that's Proverbs 15, verse 33, and now Proverbs 16, 1. The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Powerful, powerful. Somebody highlight that whole thing. Now we're going back into Psalms 
uh, 51 now. We already read, uh, you know, God loves a contrite spirit in a heart. We're going back into Matthew 7, 14. What did he say about that one? You remember? Narrow and straight. So the word of the Lord says, narrow and straight is the way that leads to life. All right. Now we can look at Noah in both ways because Noah is definitely one of the elders seated on the throne of glory as well as Noah was one was the one who was saved through the great flood all right yes father okay he wants me to go into that scripture now the scripture that started all of this eight souls were saved by water First Peter three nineteen. I hear you. I hear I hear Peter saying, Who else who then can be saved? Said with man things are impossible, but God, all things are possible. Yes, Father, I'm going there right now. Who then can be saved? And I hear you, Father. Uh, where he says, where he says, um, pick up your cross and come follow me. Sell all that you have. Matthew nineteen twenty five. Can we? Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power and electrocute me. Matthew 19.25 You're the living water. Somebody's about to be filled up even as we pass through in with uh, Noah through the water. Look what it says in Matthew 19.25. Take it up in verse 24. So Jesus is talking to a rich young man who has plenty possessions. We're gonna read. We're gonna read this. We're gonna read all of it. All right. We're gonna read. Um, take it up in verse sixteen, Matthew nineteen. Now behold, one came and said, "Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life?" Verse seventeen. So he said to him, "Why do you call me good?" No one is good but one that is God, because he wants to take him off of this, the physical, and put him directly in the spirit. Give God glory, not man. I hear him saying, Father, okay, here we go again. Matthew 19, verse 17. So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments verse 18 he said to him which one jesus said you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness what is he naming the commandments honor your father and your mother and you shall love your neighbor as yourself so he just listed the second five He just listed the second five, which is love that he's pointing to. Of course, you're going to love God, and then you're going to love your neighbor. But he's pointing to love because he said, the law and the prophets hang the, uh, the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets hang on these or something like that. Okay, he says, the law on these, the law and the prophets hang, something like that. Okay, um, go into the Bible, okay, he says, go into the Bible verse. Upon these hang the law, no shortcut, and the prophets. Upon these hang the law and the prophets. What is it? Love. For the fruit of the Spirit is love. All right. Matthew 22, 40. 
Somebody check 1990 in Hebrew Strong's Concordance to me, please. 1919. He says, love. Just type in 1919 Hebrew Strongest Concordance and keep it. Let's go. He said, upon these two hang the law and the prophets. Can I get that scripture? Matthew 22, 14. It can't be further from here. Ah, there we go. Take it up in verse 39, and then we're going to read 38, but we're going to read 37, because he also said, Upon these two hang the law and the prophets, love your God, and then you love your neighbor. So let's read. Take it up in verse 36. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Verse 38, this is the first and a great commandment. And verse 39, the second is like it, like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And now we get to read verse 41. So he lined up verse 36 to verse 41. See it? Line upon line. And he says, On these two hang the law and the prophets. In verse 41, While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, And we're going to, well, Jesus asked them, Saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And he said to him, The son of David. All right, hold on there. Where are we now with this? Matthew 19, 25. So Jesus is speaking to this rich young man. This is what you ought to do. Keep the commandments. Love God and love others as you love yourself. Right? Look what he says. Adonai <laughs> All right, where are you reading here now? All right, and it says, take it on verse 20 of Matthew 19. The young man said to him, all these things I've done since my youth. Yes. And now, put your hand back down. What do I still lack? You got half of the commandments right. You do good. But the first part, the first part is love your God. Somebody check 22, 22. The first part is love your God. And you're missing that. Look what he says. The young man said to him, All these things I've kept from my youth. What do I still lack? And Jesus said, If you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have and give it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. But to do this, he has to love God above the world. So he's missing half of the, the fire of the Holy Spirit. We're coming back. Glory to God. Matthew 19. And we're looking at now the young man when he heard that saying... What did Jesus say? If you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have. Give it to the poor and come. You'll have treasure in heaven. And come follow me. It said that the young man heard that saying and he went away sad. Sorrowful. All right, hold it there. Remember what God was showing us. Father was showing us that if we bring seeds in sorrow, if we're sorrowful for him, and we're hated in the world because that's where the sorrow is going to come from. The hatred, the persecution for standing up for God and not for being part of the system. If we're sorrowful, we're going to bring forth seeds to sow. Hold on there. Now, the Bible says that the young man went away sorrowfully. But remember when we read in Corinthians that there's a godly sorrow that is the hatred of the world against you for choosing Jesus and God above all. 
And there's a godly sorrow. Where does the godly sorrow come from? From not listening. From not following God. That's the bad part. So look what he said. But when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had many possessions. He had great possessions. You want me to leave my mansion, my Lamborghinis, all the money in my bank. You want me to give it away? Wait, will you? You want me to give... Somebody check 2626 in the Hebrew Strongest Concordance. You want me to give all of that away and come and follow you? What are you going to give me? He's going to give you eternal life. He's going to give you heaven with more than you could imagine. All right? Hold it there. Cling to it. And now, well, he's lining up line upon line because look at this now. So remember the very next thing that I heard was who can be saved? Then let's go there. We're going into the book of Matthew 19 and somewhere down here. Okay, we're looking at verse 25. So we're taking the before and after and it falls exactly at 24 to 26. So Abba Jesus just gave us from verse 17 to 26, line upon line. Look what he says. Let's read it together. Uh, Matthew 19 and verse... What are you reading? Verse 20... Um, verse 24. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The words of Jesus. If you have a problem with that, take it up with him. And it says, verse 25, when his disciples heard that, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? Who's going to do this? Look what it says in verse 26. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible. If you, okay, somebody check 2828 in the Hebrew strongest. Um, I hear the Lord saying, with men it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. All right, and that's exactly what he says here. He says, with men this is impossible, with God, all things are possible. So now I hear Abba Jesus saying, an empty vessel in the world, void of the Holy Spirit of the living God, can never make that turn. But when God fills up the vessel, he's going to lead your spirit man. And as many as are led by the spirit of God are sons of God, because we're going to walk by the Father's counsel. Who's going to empower us to do it? God Almighty himself. We're going to have almighty strength. Forgive my little muscle. Almighty strength to follow him. 29, 29, Hebrew strongest, somebody. I hope you're taking down these numbers because I'm not taking down these numbers. Look what it says. So, where, where are we now with this? Okay. So, if Noah would have said, God, you asked me to build this ark of gopher wood, right? How long did it really take Noah? Did it really say? Never really said. But Noah preached 120 years, didn't he? So it might have been... I don't want to guess this. Let's go and see if Noah really preached 120 years. He might have finished the, ar the building of the ark. For that long? Who knows? That's his entire lifespan. How long was Noah going to deny himself, pick up his cross and walk? How long was Noah going to say, I don't want the riches of the world. I want God. Sold everything that he had and built the ark. Was it worth it in the end? Was it worth it in the end? It was, wasn't it? It was worth it. He was saved through the flood. He and his family. 
It was worth following the instruction of God. Hold on. Do we see the righteousness of Noah? Do you see this? Noah I'm looking for anything that says Noah preached 120 years. Somebody check 3113. So this is wisdom because I'm hearing Abba Jesus and he said when Noah preached 120 years, where where would where did they see that? Where? Nowhere did they say that, right? But the Bible does say that a man's lifespan would be to that length. So, hold on. We're going to go all the way back now. Let me see if I can find myself here with all these. Wow, there's so many. Okay, um, your scripture page is supposed to be filled right now, like 50 pages or more open. Noah would have sacrificed in his life if he had a job, he put it aside to do the work. What was the work? To build the ark. What, what else did he have to do? He had to preach the word. But if he had a normal job and he was going after the things of the world, do you think Noah could have done this? Somebody check 3232 in the strongest. Um, no. Okay, hold on. I'm going. I'm looking for where we stopped. Just hold a second. Matthew seven seven fourteen. Matthew seven fourteen is where you want us at. Matthew seven fourteen. What was I saying before I went to Matthew nineteen? <laughs> All right, so look at this. The Bible says, narrow is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is the gate that leads to heaven. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. So if you got company and foolishness, many are going through the gate that goes to destruction. Somebody look at 33. 33 33 in the Hebrew strongest it says but small is the gate and narrow the way that leads to life and only a few find it let's stop there with the few now we're going into first Peter three twenty. 1 Peter 3.20 Take it up in verse 19 and it says By whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison What do you mean? Spirits in prison? Who died? All the souls that perished Or died Who formerly Look and they rejected him who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few there's the word again few find it few found the way few were saved few listened to the instruction few continued in the ways of the Lord few humbled themselves before God few were honored in the sight of all men few is the word it says while in the, the while the ark was being prepared in which few that is eight souls out of the entire world was saved through water Now hold it there. So Noah is preaching. He is building the ark. And who told his family to enter in the ark with him? 
His family had to be people of God as well who were listening to his wise counsel. But nobody comes to God unless his, nobody comes to Jesus Christ unless his spirit as God draws them to him. Hold on, we're finding it. Okay. No one comes to the Son unless the Father draws him near. So the Bible says no one comes to God, no one comes to Jesus unless he as God draws him near. The book of John 6.44 What does God say about drawing near again? He said draw near to him and he will draw near to us. Yes, Papa, I'm writing. Draw near to God and he and he will draw near to you so now we see a drawing near kind of thing going on here so those who draw near to God he draw near to us so if you desire to draw near to God he is going to draw you to him he is going to come closer you're going to see the revealing for yes father for the beginning for fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of who God is, is understanding. So if you desire to know him as God, you're getting understanding and he's going to bring the revelation of what he's about to do because Noah was a prophet of God. Hallelujah, fire falling. All right, somebody check 3812 for me. La 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 la. Kiarando Yeshilia. So, the drawing near to God causes Him to draw near to us. He loves those who love Him. He loves those who want to continually know Him, continually. Just follow him continually. He loves that. He loves it. He loves it. He loves it. And he says in the book of uh, um, James. The book of James 4, 8. Take it up in verse 7. The book of James 4, 8. If we draw near unto God, he will draw near unto us. The book of James 4, 8, that's two, 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 that's six twos. Twelve tribes of Israel. <laughs> James 4, 8. So how does he say it? Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Do you desire it? Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, your hearts, you double-minded. You can't be in the world and in God. You can't be in the world and in God. You got to be in God and in God. That's it. It says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. What does God love again? Broken heart, contrite spirit. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. You got two ways. You want to be in the world and in God. God wants you to be in Him alone. Let Him be your first love. Grieve. There we go again. We're crying again. Grieve and mourn. Well, we're crying a lot now. Grieve and mourn and weep. Well, now we're on the floor and we need a mop. Because it says grieve and mourn and mop. I mean, and weep. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, Abba Jesus just laughed at me. He just laughed. He said, grieve 
as in cry, mourn, well now we're crying even more, and then weep, as in we're going to have to cry so much, we're going to have to mop it up. Turn your laughter into mourning and your joy into gloom. What is this called? Now, the word of God says, where was it again? Corinthians. Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians. Can't remember way exactly right now. But the word of God says, godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. When you decide that you just want God and you don't want to be double-minded in just the world and God, then you're getting godly sorrow and that's exactly what God wants because then he can use you. Then he's going to use you. Hallelujah. Then he's going to say, okay, because this one really wants me. This one's not sharing my glory with the world this one really wants me noah was found righteous in his generation he really wanted god daniel was found righteous in his generation he really wanted god daniel who was, th was thrown into the lion's den now abraham was found righteous in his generation he really wanted god Hmm, there's a there's a kind of a there's a kind of a similarity there between them. They really wanted God. They made him their first love. All right, hold on there. So now we're gonna see how you get to know that God is Jesus Christ, because He said. In his word, look what he says, no one comes to me unless the Father draws him near. You're not going to come to Jesus unless his spirit draws you near as God the Father. You're not going to know who he is until you desire him with all of you, all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind. All of your strength, all of your body, everything has to work. And when you do that, he's going to reveal to you. Glory to God, Father, I love you. Look what he says, John 6, 44. Take it on verse 43. Stop grumbling among yourselves. Jesus replied, no one can come to me unless the Father sent him, draws him, now will raise him up. I will raise him up at the last day. I will raise him up at the last day. No one can come to me unless the Father draws him near. You're not going to know that Jesus Christ is God unless His Spirit as God Almighty permits you to know that truth. The thing is, do you really want Him? Verse 45, now we jump into prophets. Look what it says, it is written in the prophets and they will all be taught by God, everyone who has heard the Father and learn from him comes to me. Kroyataya, nahasiyataya, shikiliyadaha. Take the electrocution. Take the fire falling from heaven right now. Urakadabando, ishiliyabarabasoto yogusiyada. Hold on. We're going back now. We're going back on a scripture page. <laughs> Hold on. We're going all the way back. Did we read out um, 1 Peter 3.20? I don't think so. Hold on. So do you see where the battle 
is with the world, money, and God. Mm. Now we're going to look at this. I hear you, Father. Yes, Lord. So when Noah positioned himself to know God, whenever he did it, I didn't say when, but when he positioned himself to know God, he set himself completely and God revealed to him his plan. Now, just like, Father, I hear you, just like he says, Abraham received a revelation that Jesus Christ is God and by sacrificing Isaac, it was the exact representation of love that God has for us like a father to the only son. That depth. I hear the Lord saying that just like Noah w believed him, just like Noah was made to pass through the water in the ark, the presence of the living God is what draws us to the waters of baptism. Truly, a baptism by fire before the baptism of water. The Bible says, take it on 1 Peter 3, uh, verse 20. So he, Jesus preached to those who were, uh, who, were, who were not listening when God was speaking. It says, okay, we're going to read it again. Take it up in verse 19. For whom he also went and preached to the spirits in prison who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In the ark, a few people, only eight souls, were saved through water. And take it up in verse 21. And this water symbolizes the baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body. Take it from the word of God. Take it in the name of Jesus. He said, it's not a bath that you're getting. It's a spiritual wash. It's a spiritual cleansing. It's the fire of the living God washing you in, washing you through, just fixing you up. Hallelujah for heaven. It says, it's not the removal of death from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So all of that is made access, how? Through belief. How do we access the blood of Christ and the fire of the living God? Him as the Holy Spirit. How do we access Him? How do we access Him? By faith, saints, by faith. So it's by faith Noah believed God and he built the ark. It's by faith we're washed by the blood. It's by faith we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We say, yes, God, we want you above all else. We want you, God. We want you above money in the world. We want you, God. We want you above the houses and the cars and the clothes. We want you, God. We want you. We desire you. And that's where God says, really? Then this is who I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus Christ said, before... Yes, Father. I'm going there right now. Holy Ghost and fire. Wee. <laughs> John 8, 58. John 8, 58. Take it up in verse 57. Some people had a problem with this when Jesus spoke. They wanted to stone him as he told them, Before Abraham was, Yahweh, I am. Because they were asking, they said, are you greater than our father Abraham? You're not even 50 years old. And he said, 
before Abraham was Yahweh I am I'm gonna show you John 8 58 then the Jews said to him you are not okay so we get to read verse 56 because this is what he just said to me in the spirit he's lining up line upon line fire from the throne room falling somebody catch it he said take it up John 8 56 your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day how could Abraham have seen Jesus when Jesus would come 2,000 years later because Abraham received the revelation in the realms of the spirit Abraham saw the plan of God Abraham was shown that God was coming as Jesus Christ deep cause on to deep John 8 56 your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day he saw it and was glad oh happy day Abraham understood that God is Jesus Christ and that the love that God has for his creation was such a love depth that the father would give his only son hallelujah and then John 8 take it up in verse 57 then the Jews said to him you are not yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham you see their eyes were too latched on to the physical that they could not connect to the spiritual they could not connect to the spiritual that God was feeding the people verse 58 truly truly I tell you Jesus declared before Abraham was born I am the I am in the Hebrew is YHWH I am God I uh, said before Abraham was born I am God okay hallelujah I'm getting a little bit too worked up be anxious for nothing but with prayer and supplication present your request to the Lord Whew. let's go to the other verse before and after at all times to take it in context daddy I'm hungry I mean like I'm really really my tummy going girl look what it says verse 59 at this they picked up stones to throw at him they wanted to stone God they were so blind in the realm somebody look at 5335 for me in the Hebrew strongest please they picked up stones to stone God that is how blind you could be when God is standing in front of you you want to kill him that's why the Bible came in and said if they had known that it was the Lord they had crucified they would not have crucified him they were blind he said they were blind but Noah could see Noah could see hallelujah okay I'm closing my Bible now that's a lot of fire hold on you want more fire take more fire Hebrews 5335 5335 means the head of a family God said that I would be the head God would be the head God would be the head of the family Christ the head of man and man the head of his household Noah was a man who had Christ as the head for we have the mind of Christ hold on hold on hold on the conviction is here and fire is falling he says God is the head of Christ what does that mean God is the head of Christ it means that whatever Christ did Jesus Christ he did it with the mind of God because he is God okay hold on 
Ooh. Holy Ghost, I'm getting fire. <laughs> First Corinthians 11, 3. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Okay, 1 Corinthians 11, 3. They will know. Tell somebody they will know. Who is the head and who is the tail? If you got the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 11, 3. Take it up in verse 2. Now I commend you for remembering me in everything. For maintaining the traditions. Just as I pass them on to you. He ain't talking about the traditions of men. But I want you to understand. That the head of every man is Christ. So he said you followed me a man. In the beginning. But I want you to understand. That the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head on with his head covered dishonors his head. Hold on, Holy Ghost. That's why they used to shave their head, right? Hold on. They call the hair a covering. It says, every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered, dishonors his head. So God says, hear the word of the Lord. Noah, even though Jesus hadn't yet come yet in the natural realm, Noah, Noah's head was Christ. Noah's mind was the mind of Jesus. Woo! 57, 57 in a Hebrew strongest. Somebody find it. Noah's mind was the mind of God. Noah's mind was... Oh, they ended it. I saw when they did it. Hold on, I'm coming right back. Noah's mind... Kiaramando Ishilia. They could put in their prosperity gospel. They could put in whatever kind of gospel they want to preach. But God says the mind of every man is Christ or should be Christ. The leader, hold on, it souls. Eight souls were saved. Eight. I'm right to get together. That's why I'm yelling. Hold on. So, hallelujah. We're going again. Live in five. One, two, three, go. So, what was I, what was I saying? The head of Christ is God. Which means when you saw Jesus on the earth... He was working as God in the flesh. Everything that he taught of was mindful of souls, mindful of heaven, mindful of everything that God thinks about, which are God desires none to perish, but all to come to repentance. When every prophet and every righteous man before God stood before God, their mind was Christ, which is like saying their mind was God. Because as many as are led are sons. Hallelujah. Okay, look what he says. Glory to God. We've reached the depths. We've reached the depths. We're in there. We're in deep. We're in deep. Holy Ghost, we're in deep. Noah was a man whose head was Christ. He was a leader. He was a leader. What did the uh, what did the Hebrew strongest for? What was it? Fifty three thirty five. Say, the head of a family. Glory to God. Woo. 
Noah! I'm trying to stay awake. Noah! Well, I can't really sleep right now, but my eyes are burning. Noah was a man filled with Christ. Ooh. But how is it that they're saying that Christ isn't good when Christ means God? Anything that is not of God, it's called anti-Christ. Don't mix it up. Noah had the mind of Christ. The Bible says, but we have the mind of Christ. Deep calls on to deep. We're deep. Ooh, we need oxygen down here. We're deep in the ocean. We're deep in the ocean. Ooh, no wonder Noah preached. No wonder Noah built the ark. No wonder Noah was telling souls to come into the ark. Why? Because he was mindful of the souls. He had the mind of Christ. The mind of God. Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm getting electrocuted. Holy Ghost. Rimando yo robosataya. So what were they teaching the people? All kinds of rubbish. God says Noah was the head of his family. That's why his family followed him. His family were led by the Spirit of God. Noah had the Spirit of God even though he had not come yet as Jesus Christ. God gave Noah his spirit, people. Woo. So when he had to pass through the water, it represented the baptism that Jesus was saying, Nicodemus, unless a man is baptized by the water and the Holy Spirit, because you're not going to the water without the Holy Spirit. Some people take a bath. Some people take a shower. But God says you can't go to the water unless the Spirit of the living God draws you there. And you're not wanting to go to the water if you don't want Jesus. And if you want Jesus, then God in the Spirit has drawn you to Him as Jesus Christ to understand that He saves you. Woo! Ah! Okay, the, give me a headache. Oh, I'm getting a headache. Back to send the sevenfold in Jesus' name. They don't like the deep. But we're in the deep. Ooh, we're swimming with oxygen tanks in the deep. <laughs> I'm like, Holy Ghost, I love you, Abba Jesus. I love you so much. Look what he says. Let's go. Where are we with this? Ooh, don't fry my brain now. Look what he says. Can we see what 3812 means in the spirit? Well, after, after we'll see it. There's so many angels. I hope you are taking down the numbers because there are revelations in every one. We're looking at, ooh, where do we stop? Where do we stop? Hold on, I'll get there. Ah, Noah, okay, so Gen Genesis 6, 9. What did Genesis 6, 9 tell us about Noah? Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. Hold it right there. Who is our righteousness? Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Noah received all that revelation. He understood, even as God had not yet come as Jesus Christ, he understood that if he was to listen to God, believe, and walk after God, that he would be on the right path. Because he would come to know him as Jesus. And what does the blood of Jesus do? It makes us blameless. It makes us, it washes us clean. Noah was blameless in his generation. Saints, this is such a powerful revelation. Hold on, we're going down. We're going deep, 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 deep. Calls on too deep. We're swimming deep. But to receive this, you got to become as a child. You got to humble yourself in the sight of Almighty God. Matthew 18, 3. You got to become like a child. Hold on. Psalms 51, 17, we read it. Did we read all of it? We did, didn't we? 
kind of quick between there. I hope I didn't lose a window. Okay, yeah, we read that. We read all of that. We, we're going down now. Back, back, back. Matthew. We're going down. Proverbs 16, 8. Wait. Yeah, Proverbs 16, 8. We, 18, sorry. Which is the fear of the Lord. No. Proverbs 16, 8. 18. Hold on. That's Proverbs 9, 10. Proverbs 16, 8. Somebody remind me again what that is. I forgot. We're going back. We're going to look at it now. Proverbs 16, 18. Abba Jesus blanks out my mind and then he begins to just pace it with scripture like this. So then we have to look. Look what he says. Pride goes before a fall. So it's better to be lowly in the spirit among the humble that are few than to divide the spoil with the proud. Lock it and load it in your head and in your heart. It doesn't matter. If he empties it, You'll just give it back. You'll bring it back. The fruits of the spirit and the fruits of the flesh. We looked at that. We looked also at Romans 8, 14. Did we read out all of it? I don't remember if we read out all of it. So I'm going back now. We're almost done. Hang in there. It says for you to... Oh, there we go. So we're going to read 14 to 15, all right? For all those... Who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery that turns you to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. All right, we're going on. Hallelujah. That's where you say, Abba, Jesus, Father, Jesus. But you don't just call him by name. You, you move in it. Look what he says, 1 Corinthians 2, 16. This is what Noah had, even though God had not come yet at Jesus Christ. Noah had this. The spiritual man judges all things. Noah hadn't seen the flood, but Noah knew that God was speaking to him. But he himself is not subjected to anyone's judgment. So people could have judged him and said, well, what's stripping as he's doing? He's building an ark. But he's not subject to that. No. The Bible says, for who has known the mind of the Lord, so as to tell God what to do, to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. All right, so the, the spirit of the living God is what instructs our spirit man. 1 Corinthians 6, 2, we looked at the judging. And how can we not judge these simple matters? We looked at the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and he adds no sorrow to it. Hold on, because we were looking at the sorrow of godliness and the sorrow of worldliness. The sorrow of godliness are all the lies that Satan will eventually bring that will cause you sorrow and pain in the world. But the sorrow of godliness is the sorrow of being hated for what God has required. Hallelujah. All right. Anybody remember where it was? I don't. 1 Corinthians 6, 2. Not that one. Ooh, I forgot. I forgot, I forgot. I'm going to find it. Don't worry. I'll remember it. It's somewhere here. 2 Corinthians 7.10 Lock it and load it. 2 Corinthians 7.10 Godly sorrow. So, godly sorrow will bring repentance. Loving what God loves. And when we love what God loves, He draws us near because we're drawing near because we want to repent because we want to please God. And then we get the blessings of Him. And then, now we're back to where we are. Okay, we're almost done. Noah believed God while there wasn't a flood. We looked at that in the book of Hebrews 11.7. The Bible says, Blessed is the man. We know it, don't we? But now take the revelation and put Noah there. Blessed is the man who does not 
understand in the way or do like minded of sinners doesn't mean to block sinners it says blessed is the man who does not stand okay who does not walk well, we're gonna read it we're gonna find it anyway psalms 1 1 i am saying stand in the in the way of sinners or whatever we're gonna read it we're gonna find it psalms 1 1 what's the book before psalms job is it so job last verse Job Papa <laughs> My tummy goes girl My tummy singing to you Job 42 17 So Job died Oh and full of all his and full of days Why would God put that there? Why would he just us? What are we talking about? We spoke about the counsel of God leading to longer life. Remember that? I hear you, Father. I'm going there. I'm, I'm writing. Um, how did you say it again? Length of day. No, the length of days. Something about the length of days. The count. Okay. I'm, my screen is kind of freezing because there are like 60. Um, Pages joined up together, which is the scripture page, what I, the, which is what I call the scripture page, the council of wisdom. Ah, boy, it's, win it's wisdom. Leads to the length of days. Yes, I hear you. Length of days. Abba says, wisdom leads to the length of days. Look how I spell wisdom. W I S O D M. <laughs> to wisdom hold on to her for she will what she will lengthen your days cling to wisdom even in job 12 12 which is a key should we read that we're gonna read that job 12 12 first then we're gonna read corinthians um sorry proverbs i haven't found proverbs yet but we're reading proverbs so Job 12.12 12. Keep or treasure wisdom or something Okay So we're going to read Job 12.12 12. I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone here Job 12.12 12. Since we're in the book of Job We'll just go back a little bit This is a key Job 12.12 12, And it says Take it up in verse 11 Does not the air Test the words and the mouth taste the food. Remember what God said? Remember he said the um the the stationing of the heart it's the us, but the res the response of the mouth is for him. Alright. Yes, daddy. Look what he says. Wisdom okay, sorry. Wisdom is with aged men. And with length of days, understanding. So most people, not old people, when they get old, they get wiser. Most. But when he says, uh, how does he say it here? Aged men. Let's look at the fathers. Abraham. No. We're looking at these. Okay? Look at, uh, where, where, did, where did, I didn't know where Job went. Okay. Hold on to that. Uh, we're going to read. With him are wisdom and strength. He has counsel and understanding. Even as our grandparents, great-grandparents, when they pass through this life, they can give us the wise counsel. But, of course, some of them are pagan. Some of them, they, they go their own way and they say, oh, you know, and they lead the people wrong. But when God speaks about wisdom here from the elderly or the aged, He's speaking about the fathers. Okay? So, um, what are we going to look for now? Proverbs? Oh, 
hold on as I find Proverbs. If you find it, you can um, share it with me. I've got to find the book of Proverbs now. Okay, I'm moving 3812. Somebody write down that as Hebrew concordance, and I'm going to write here. I'm going to write right here. Keep or treasure. That's the scripture. I see it in the spirit, but I can't. I'm trying to grasp it on the Google. Keep wisdom for she an instruction for she will lengthen your days wisdom and instruction okay proverbs 3 2 there we go proverbs 3 2 and we're looking at verse 1 to 3 Let's see as fast. I found it. I was kind of racing with Google. Look at this. Proverbs 3, 2. Take it up in verse 1. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments, for they will add length to your days, years, and peace to your life. Never let loving devotion of faithfulness leave you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablets of your heart. Is that what you wanted? Not that one. Okay, he said another one. So you're going to have to search something else. Wisdom and instruction will lengthen your days. I'm searching for it still. I'd say I share it after, but I can't. So, is it Proverbs 9.11? Ah, it's Proverbs 9.11. Are you kidding me? It's Proverbs 9.10 or 9.11. Okay, so look what it is. It's Proverbs 9.11, which is just a, um, after the scripture verse. Proverbs 9.11. So, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Verse 10. For through wisdom, your days will be lengthened, 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 length, 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 or multiplied, and your years, years will be added to your life. If you are wise, you are wise to your own advantage. But if you scoff and are puffed up and prideful, you alone will bear the consequences. Ouch. 1919 and the Hebrew strongest. All right, now we're gonna go. We're almost done. So, pride and puffy. Pride and puffy comes when you want to please the world. Sad and taking counsel comes when he wants to please God. The book of John 15:18. I'm sweating up a stool. The book of John 15, verse 18. This is my command to you. Love one another. If the world hates you, understand it hated me first. Didn't, it, didn't they hate Noah too? It says, if you were of the world, it would love you as its own. But instead, the world hates you. Somebody check 2017 in the spirit, and 2019, and 2020, and 2021. <laughs> okay, look what it says. If you were of the world, it would love you. I'm serious, from 2017 to 2021, we're going to look at it in the spirit. If you were of the world, it would love you as its own. But instead, the world hates you. They mock you. They scoff at you. They call you stupid. They call you weak, they call you blind and dumb and everything else. Instead, the world hates you because you are not of the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. Hallelujah. We're almost done. Be anxious for nothing but prayer and supplication. 2059 in the Hebrew strongest. Isaiah 53.3 Was Jesus loved? No, he was hated. They laughed at him. It was like, 
him saying, I am the Messiah and I've come to save your souls. And they laughed at him. So look at 21, 21 is spirit, Hebrew, um, court strongest. Um, and they laughed at him. They just laughed at him. Few got into heaven and many slid down to the path of hell. Which is very, very sad, which is why he cries so much. He doesn't like when his people perish. He doesn't like when anybody perishes. Yes, Papa, we're going into Isaiah 53.3. I don't remember if we read it out, but we're going to read it out now. Because remember the sorrows, remember the godly sorrows? I have good news for you. I have come to show you how loving our Father is that He even made those burdens light off our shoulders. That though we're sad, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. I hear Him. Here's what He says. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Somebody find that scripture and read No, he said, you find that scripture and read it. I'm finding it right now. Weeping may endure for the night. But what comes in the morning? Joy. How long is the night? It's a couple of hours, right? Sometimes we have long, long nights, but not anymore because the days are shortening. But in Psalms 35, Psalms 30 verse 5, I'm going to show you the love of our Father that's just amazing, even more amazing. He doesn't even leave us with godly sorrow that it weighs us down. Psalms 30 verse 5, Look what he says, sing to the Lord, O you saints, and praise his holy name, for his anger is fleeting, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. In prosperity, I said, I will never be shaken. Do you think that man who says in prosperity I will never be shaken some people in prosperity gospel preachers will turn that around and tell you they're standing in money God means prospering in his soul okay deep calls on to deep all right look what he says else what were we reading now about the sorrow Isaiah 53 5 I'm 3 Isaiah 53 3 so this is the loving heart of Jesus now God our Father he surely take it up in verse 4 okay so we're gonna read from verse 3 he was despised and rejected by men does that sound nice a man acquainted with grief they knew him for sadness and it says like one from whom men hide their faces they don't want to look at him he was despised and we esteemed him not i esteem you now to call the glory the honor and the praise surely so we're reading <clears throat> He took on our infirmities and he carried our sorrows. I can't. Just give me a second. Maybe I should drink some more. I drink some more. That's not helping. Okay. So there's going to be a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of crying, just a little bit. Just don't want to wet the Bible foot. In 
for him to stand. Okay, here's what he says. Okay. Surely he took on our infirmities and he carried our sorrows. He took away all our sorrows. He took it. He took it. He took the heaviest burden. And yet we considered him stricken by God, struck down and afflicted. I don't like this wee thing because I don't consider but you know that some people look at him and they just like he's not a, a man to be esteemed he's not who he said he's not who he says he is or he claims to be or people call him that's not true this is the heart of our father just like how he cut weeping short during the night he took our sorrows our deepest sorrows he took it from us even the godly sorrow, he made it light for us to bear. Whew, whew, Holy Ghost. The Bible says, our next verse, they who sowed seeds with tears will reap sheaves of joy. And uh, that's where we just, we kind of came into Psalms um, 26. Remember that? Remember where he said that we'll bear seeds for sowing? Full seeds. Our lives might be, uh, if your life is anything like mine, our lives would be good ground for sowing. Good ground for seeds to be planted. People would not be afraid or ashamed to sow their seeds, to, to put their faith in what we share why because we are a living testimony of God moving in our lives and though we for us to bring forth what we have to bring forth with tears it's the Holy Spirit of the living God in us bringing out that strength to do what we must do with tears with godly sorrow so let's read again Psalms 26 Take it up in verse 5. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth. Okay, we're going to read verse 3. We're going to read verse 4. Let's read verse 3 of Psalms 126. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. Didn't he bring us through? Hasn't he always stood by us? Isn't he our comforter? Isn't he? Isn't he our teacher? Look what he says. Bring back up captivity, O Lord, as in the streams in the south. For those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seeds for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his cheese with him. Hallelujah. So, you know where Father says, Enter into the joy of your master. Jesus will say to those on his right, the sheep that listen to his voice, enter into the joy of your master. Hallelujah. Here's where we just celebrate. Here's where we do the uh, the dance. And we put our fingers up in the air and we do the dance. Amen. Psalms 27, 1. This was the very next verse. But we were looking at Psalms 126.6. But we heard this in the spirit as well. And you're going to say, oh yeah. So we get to read, we got to read verse 2 as well. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Who built it? Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Do you remember when he said that? And it says, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. Now look at this. We're going a little bit further. Now we're going into the scripture that I gave. It was just what we read, which would be, now the scripture would be 
Psalms 127, first verse, and we're going to read before and after, which is Psalms 26, and we just read it, right? We're going on. The book of Acts 4.12. So how can he say, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain? Well, we're going to read it now. They rejected Jesus. Acts 4. Sorry, I'm not supposed to do that, but my eyes are itchy. Acts 4 verse 11 tells us this Jesus is the stone you builders have rejected. So they built up a house without the foundation that is Christ, and it says, which has become the cornerstone, which is keeping everything sturdy. And it says, verse 12, salvation exists in no one else, for there is no other name on the heaven and earth given to men by which we must be saved, but who? but Jesus and when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled they didn't go to university they didn't um, they didn't have a degree a master's a bachelor's but when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled on the earth but they were schooled in the University of Heaven it says ordinary men they were just ordinary men they marveled and took note that these men had been with Jesus well do you see Jesus here right now do you see him he's right here you don't see him but he's here all right look what the Lord says about trusting in him we're almost done we have four more to go Psalms 125 take it up in verse 1 Who can get bored of studying the Word of God? Who can get tired, except physically tired? Like if you need to eat or drink something. Nobody. Are you kidding me? Psalms 125, because the Word of the Lord came to me saying, Who? Trust in Him. So we're going to read Psalms 124, last verse, and then we're going to come back and read Psalms 125 more. Let's see what it says. And why would we trust in the Lord? Psalms 124, take it up in verse 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Well, we, what did we just read there? There is no other name under heaven and earth by which we're saved. Acts 4.12. All right. And now we're taking it up in verse 1 of Psalms 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. And then it says, well, how does Mount Zion look? Is it a dried up mountain? Is it? No, it's an evergreen mountain. Look what it says in verse 2. As the mountain sur surrounds Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. Hallelujah! Ooh, that's a hallelujah! Somebody give a big hallelujah. The Lord says, as the mountain surrounds Jerusalem, so does the Lord surround his people now and forevermore. Look at 35.15 in the, in the Hebrew, I would say in the spirit. Look at 35.15 and 35.16 in the Hebrew strongest. Um, then I heard the word of the Lord saying, they who wait upon him. Did Noah wait upon him? Did Noah listen to him? Or did Noah went and shopping in the mall? Did Noah went building up the biggest, doing the, what, what did Noah do? He waited on the Lord. For waiting on the Lord is like uh, an example of being humble before God. Isaiah 40 and verse 31. And verse 31, beloved. And we're reading. I have asked, can I cut this? No? Okay. Isaiah 40 and verse 31. The book of Isaiah 
40 verse 31 and it says in 30 even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall but those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength somebody stretch out and soar like an eagle <laughs> so they who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength they will mount up mount up you gotta mount up you gotta kind of push back your hands like that you gotta mount up with wings like an eagle strong and they will run run like physically no endure they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not faint glory to God we're almost to the end hang in there three more to go the next verse that I heard was what the bride of Christ what is she doing she is enduring she is running revelations 19 8 take it on verse 7 to 9 excuse me Let us take a sip of water. Just really quickly. Ooh, I got the hiccups now. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him, our Jesus, the glory for the marriage of the Lamb is come. Not the marriage supper. The marriage of the Lamb. The time to say who you trust in. The time to say who you stand in. The time to say you'll serve God and not man. Okay, hold on. Okay, here we're back. We're almost done. We're going to serve Jesus. We're going to put our trust in Jesus, not this. We're going to put our trust in Jesus, not this. We are going to put our trust in God and not man. We're going by the system of God, the system of men. Ah, uh, the Bible says that the marriage of the lamb is come. Ah, uh, they're going to ask you, do you take Jesus to be your lawfully wedded husband? Do you take Jesus as the God of heaven and earth? Or do you take Jesus as your savior God? Or do you take that thing? Or do you renounce him? You're gonna say your vows now. 39 to 15. Don't think it says she was wearing, what was she dressed up in? She was given clothing of fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen she wears, the righteous acts of the saints, Holy Ghost inside. Noah believed God and he did. He did exactly. For look what he says. Hold it on. Oh, hold on. And it says, and the angel. Okay. For the fine linen she wears are the righteous acts of the saints. Then the angel told me to write. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. So you gotta get through the marriage ceremony to get to the reception. You got to say yes to God, who is Jesus Christ, to get to the marriage supper. All right. Look what it says else. We're almost done. And how are you going to do this? It's by faith. Hebrews 11.6. We looked at without faith. It's impossible to please God, but by faith. There we go. So, I heard the Lord saying in Genesis 15.6, Abraham believed the Lord. And it was accounted righteousness to him. Let's read it. The last one, right? The book of Genesis. Because the end is revealed where? In the beginning, beloved. And the Lord took him outside. Remember? Get out of your comfort zone. Shake it off a little. The Lord took him outside and said, Look into the heavens and count the stars if you're able. And he told him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed God and was credited him righteousness, just like Noah. And the Lord also told him, Who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. That's it. So just like Abram was accounted for righteousness through faith, we are accounted righteousness through faith at the cross of Calvary. Noah was also accounted for righteousness for believing God. And that's how it were saved through water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is ready. Hallelujah. You're going to see uh, what angels were present. That's the word of the Lord. God is ready just by faith. Uh, he wants to see it. He wants to see it, demonstrate it, show it. 
Hallelujah. He's ready. If we'd stand like Abraham, stand like Noah, stand like the others. Just having done all to stand, stand, beloved. God loves you, and I love you. Shalom. I hope you enjoyed the fire. I did. I might come on back to give the angels of the message, but I'll see, okay? In Jesus' name. Shalom. Bye for now.